Well, hi, welcome to The Christian Contrast, where we talk about how walking with Jesus leads us to live differently than the world around us. Um, solo episode this week, so I'm just, uh, I'm Dan, and I'm here to walk you through. Um, we're gonna talk about Sunday mornings, but first I want you to imagine Sunday 4 p.m. Um, now Sunday at 4 p.m. is gonna be different for different ones of us, but for those of us that are churchgoers, I, I want you just to think about where you might be at mentally Sunday at 4 p.m. Um, you were at church that morning, and uh, maybe at Sunday at 4 p.m., if you had to reflect back on what was your church experience like, it might involve a number of things. Um, maybe you came away and you were thinking the sermon was good. Um, it, it wasn't something that was spectacular, and, and maybe by 4 p.m., you, you even would need to think for a minute to remember why you thought it was good, but you thought it was good. You, you remember being engaged at the time. Maybe even at this point, it's a little bit like a movie that you saw a while ago, and you don't remember exactly what happens, but you're like, I remember liking it. And, and so that was a positive experience. Uh, maybe in the midst of the music, there was a song or two where you really felt especially engaged and felt like you were being spoken to. And so that was a moving moment. You might have even raised your arm. You might not have. You might have shut your eyes. But but you felt like, yeah, that there was a moment where you felt like you were engaged with God during that time. Um, maybe there were some other moments along the way. Um, maybe for some of you that are listening, you're not terribly plugged into a church family. And so when you attend on Sunday mornings, you sort of go in, maybe you see a person or two, you have a greeter that shakes your hand and they're real polite or overly pol polite, but then you pretty much just head home. Uh, maybe for some of you on Sunday mornings, it's frustrating getting to the church service. Uh, maybe you're a guy and you're like, my wife always takes too long to get ready. Um, maybe your parents and you're just like, our, our kids, that they save their worst behavior for Sunday morning when we're trying to get them all together and wrangle them. We're always running late. Maybe you have a teenager that's declared to you, I don't think I should have to go to church anymore. I think church is dumb. And now you're trying to wrestle through, do I make them go? Do I not make them go? What's the best parenting thing? So there's strife over that. So maybe your Sunday at 4 p.m., maybe even feel like overall it was a positive church experience, but there's nothing that you're reflecting back on other than, yeah, next week we'll probably do it again. Now, here's why I want to go through this exercise. Um, it's not because some of you might be thinking like, as a pastor, is it disheartening to know that by Sunday at 4 p.m. and certainly by Wednesday of the following week, um, people don't really remember much about the sermon that I preach? And for me, honestly, the answer is no. Um, I, I don't expect, I know for even more committed church members, if I was talking to them on Wednesday and said, what did I preach about on Sunday? They would at least have to take a minute and just think. Sometimes I have to take a minute. If somebody says that was a great sermon on Sunday and I have to pause and say, what did I preach on on Sunday? I understand it and I really do believe that as God's word goes out to us, it, it often, the, the message in it often becomes a part of how we understand the world and how we're relating to God and we don't necessarily remember where we first got it. So I'm not worried about that, that this isn't a podcast episode to say, you need to be able to tell me what I preached on or tell your pastor what he preached on um, several days later. My point is this, if that's your consistent Sunday morning experience, you're likely to get to a point where you're having to come back with the question of why am I doing this? What, what, why am I showing up to a church service on Sunday? After all, I know God is everywhere. I know God doesn't live at church. And I know that you can worship him without showing up in that exact building. Um, you might be feeling like, why, why are we going through the difficulty? Why do I have conflict with my family over us getting ready to go on Sunday? Um, if I don't even remember what was preached on, if some of the songs don't even connect with me, if I still don't feel like I'm well connected there with other people, why am I doing this? And so what I wanna do in this episode is I wanna talk about Sunday mornings. I wanna give five thoughts or five ways for us to experience a greater Sunday morning when we gather together with our church family. And just for starters and in going into it, some of you might feel like, all right, but it is, is the Sunday gathering even that central to our Christian life? And what I wanna say is, yes, it absolutely is. Um, it, while the early church, if you read the book of Acts, they were meeting all the time, the first day of the week, Sunday, was already being set aside for a special gathering. 
And the reason for that is that the first day of the week is when Jesus rose from the dead. Some people think that Sunday is the Sabbath. It's not the Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath. Sunday is when the early church started meeting because it was a celebration of the fact that the Lord had risen from the dead. And we are told, do not forsake the gathering together. We're told in 1 Corinthians 16 that Paul's expectation was on the first day of, of the week, the church was gathering and that that's when the offering was gonna be taken up. So this is important. Sunday mornings, if you're a believer in Jesus, should not be sort of optional addition to your Christian life. This should be central. This should be something that you do unless there is some really bizarre, compelling reason for you not to be able to make it on a Sunday. This should be a central part of what we do. So now I wanna talk about five ways that I think we can make our Sundays deeper and more meaningful and more significant. And so number one is this. Um, the first way to approach the Sunday morning gathering is to prepare beforehand, in particular on Saturday night. Um, th this can be as simple as saying, you know what, don't go to bed super late because you wanna be engaged for what God is gonna do when you're gathered with his people on Sunday morning. It may mean that if you have a family, that on Saturday evening at the dinner table or at some point you gather together and you say, we're gonna pray about our time with our church family tomorrow. And we're gonna pray for, you know, we're, we're gonna pray for the pastors. We're gonna pray for the leaders. We're gonna pray for all of us. We're gonna pray for new people who are coming. We're gonna pray that God opens our hearts to what we're gonna experience. Uh, I'll even go a step further. Because if you're involved in LBF Church, you know that, um, or, or you probably know, our life groups typically follow along um, with the lessons, that the life group lessons follow along with the sermon series. So if you really wanted to, you could find out what passage is being preached on before you show up on Sunday. So you could, whether it's going on the app and looking at it, or if you have a printed, a printed out copy of those, um, you could get together as a family, you could read the passage, or if you're on your own, you could just read the passage and pray for God to prepare your heart for it. There are great ways for us to prepare on Sunday morning, to see this as, as somewhere where we're expecting God is going to work. God is going to move in this time. It's not that that's the only time he can move, but when his people gather together for worship, it's a special time that God moves. So first of all, prepare for it. Don't just slide in, prepare for that time. Um, number two is on Sundays, to maximize the fact that when we're gathering to worship, we are worshiping together. Um, now, now, I'll say a couple things about this, but, but I just want to say we, we do this weird thing sometimes, and I think it's, I think it's more of an evangelical thing than maybe a, a more liturgical church. Um, but what we do is we say, everybody, we're all going to get together at the same time in the same place to worship Jesus. And then when we all get together, the music starts, and then often somebody will say, all right, just block out everything and everyone all around you and imagine it's just you and Jesus. To which the natural question should be, well, if that's what I'm trying to do, why did I gather with all these people at the same time in the same place just to pretend that they all aren't here? Now, there is a value of remembering even in the noise of the world that, that Jesus sees each of us and loves each of us. But I'm going to advocate for, I don't think on Sunday morning we should be pretending we are the only one there. I think that we should be taken in the fact that we are gathered together corporately. And I've shared before, uh, this is particularly true during the um, singing time, because often during the teaching time, I'm teaching. Um, but when I'm not teaching, I do this during the teaching time also, I look around. Um, when we're singing, I look around and I look at other people. That's not the only thing that I'm doing, but I'll look at the worship coming from different members of our congregation, and I am built up by that. Um, and, and if you think that's weird, you should just be focused on Jesus, let me read you a passage of scripture that I think tells us this is an appropriate thing for us to do. Colossians chapter 316 says this, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with, with, with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Um, now, this is a great passage. So it does say at the end, we're singing to God. When we're singing these songs, we're singing to God. But he said earlier, when we're doing the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, when we're encountering this worship, we're also speaking to one another. We are reminding one another about who God is and how trustworthy he is and how faithful he is and how good he is and how powerful he is. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, Life Together, has this great quote. I want to read a portion of this quote to you because it, it goes into what I'm looking to say here. He says, 
we need each other because Christ in the heart of a fellow believer is always stronger than the Christ in my own heart. I need to be someplace where when I'm at my lowest, there are others who are willing to help lift me up. Or when I'm confused, I'm with mature Christians who keep me from becoming my own worst enemy. And what Bonhoeffer is saying goes far beyond just Sunday mornings. It goes to Christian community in general. But I love how this ties into Sunday mornings where he says, he, speaking honestly, he says, it seems like the Christ in my brother is stronger than the Christ in me. And I think what he means is when I'm seeing a brother or sister in Christ truly worship, truly trust Jesus with all their heart, I'm reminded of who Jesus really is, because in my heart, he hasn't seemed that trustworthy. He hasn't seemed that powerful. He hasn't seemed that compassionate or that loving. He doesn't seem like somebody I should give my affection to. When we gather together, I, I wanna encourage you, maximize the fact that we're gathered together. Feel free to look around and have your heart encouraged, not just by the person who's up front speaking, but by the people around you who are worshiping. And I, just as a last word on this, I'll say one of the things that moves me most when I look around is to see the genuine worship from church members who I know have suffered or are suffering. To see widows or widowers lifting up their voice to Jesus when I know that their grief is still fresh. To see church members that I know have lost children, um, whether they were young or whether they were adult children still, Burying your own child is a horrific reality and seeing them trust Jesus. I'm um, even growing up seeing my own parents, seeing my dad sitting in a wheelchair that he was confined to and my mom next to him lifting their voices to sing. Man, when you see that, you are reminded that Jesus is trustworthy. You are not doing anything wrong if you're looking at, now if you're looking around because you're like, I'm trying to check out a girl or I'm trying to see if this person that I don't like is there, that's not helpful. But if you're there looking and saying, I wanna be encouraged by seeing other people worship, you're not doing anything wrong. In fact, you're doing something deeply biblical. So maximize the fact that we're worshiping together, that we're in one place at one time, loving Jesus and pouring out our worship to him. That's number two. Um, number three of ways that we can approach Sunday, and, and these are gonna start to branch out, is to look around for those who don't yet belong. Now, as you're listening to this, some of you might feel like, I'm that person. I'm that person that doesn't quite belong. And so if you're the person that doesn't quite belong, my encouragement to you is don't anticipate that if you just show up on Sundays, even every Sunday, that's going to be what it means to belong. Um, at a smaller church, that might be enough because people would notice that you're there much more easily. At a church that's a little bit bigger, you got to take a next step of involvement. So, so I, man, I, I'm sympathetic if you're like, I've been showing up here for two years, almost every Sunday, and I still don't feel like people know me. But you gotta take some responsibility to say, have you taken that next step? Are you just showing up and leaving? Or have you got involved in a small group? Have you got involved in a Bible study? Have you taken the step to put yourself out there so that others can get to know you? So that I, maybe, maybe that's a six way, that's just for free. But for the rest of us, for those of us that might feel like, no, I, I am kind of connected. I know the people that I'm gonna see. I'm, I'm a part of this church. Have your eyes open for those who don't yet belong because it is a scary thing to not yet belong. And sometimes you can notice them because sometimes they're standing alone or it's just a couple standing alone. Sometimes they're looking confused. They don't know where to go to drop off their kids. They, they don't know where to go to get the coffee or they're just going to get the coffee because they want to do something with their hands. Just have your eyes open for people that look a bit uncertain, a bit confused and reach out to them. If you currently belong, if you're like, you know what? I am hemmed into this church family. I belong to this church family reaching out to those who don't yet belong is a powerful thing. And when we gather on Sundays, and, and this is something that when, when a group of us leaders, when we gather and pray before the Sunday morning gathering, we pray specifically for those uh, who are coming and for them, it's a big step of faith just to show up because we know that happens nearly every Sunday. At least somebody shows up and they're sort of like, I don't wanna go, but maybe I should go, maybe I should reach out. Maybe God will meet me in some way. And if you get to be part of the hands of Jesus and reaching out to the person who's saying, I just, I just wanna see if anybody cares about me. It is such a powerful, tangible way to welcome somebody and receive somebody in the way that we know Jesus would receive them because we are his people and we are his body. So man, have your eyes open. Look around for the people that maybe are sitting in the service or standing outside and don't quite belong and hem them in, welcome them in. 
Um, number four, fourth way, and this is something we've been emphasizing a lot at LBF churches, look for opportunities to pray with other people. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do as a church family is to make a few changes. And one of the changes is away from frequently saying, I will pray for you about that, and instead saying, let's pray about that right now. Um, now, it's good for you to pray about it later also, but man, we are gathered together and we have a common belief in Jesus and a common affection for Jesus and a common belief in what he does when we reach out to him in prayer. So if you're standing with somebody and they're talking about a problem in their life and they're talking about something that's burdening them down, you might feel like, well, I'm, I'm not a pastor, I'm not an elder, I'm, you know, am I supposed to do this? Man, you are the one right there. Look for an opportunity to, instead of saying, well, I'll be praying uh, about that, that this week, to say, hey, can I pray for you right now? And put your arm on their shoulder, gather in. It can be a simple prayer. It, it doesn't have to be complex. It is just bringing their burden to the Lord. Um, on top of that, sometimes you can go a step beyond just being willing to do it if it comes to you, but to be looking around. You know, it, one of my dreams is that, especially on, on a week where I'm preaching, where I would come outside, you know, maybe between services afterwards, and I'd look out and we would just see pockets of people praying together. You don't need to have this deep burden on your heart to say it's a good idea to pray. It, it could be that you're talking to a family that you haven't seen in a little while and they're talking about their kids and maybe everything's going re real well. In fact, maybe their kids are right there. And you might just say, gosh, it's so great to see you guys again. You know what? Can, can we just pray together right now? Can we just pray for each other's kids? Can we just pray for each other's families? Can we just rejoice together in this? Look for opportunities to pray with others during the Sunday gathering and after the Sunday gathering, which also means you're not rushing off afterwards, like got to get home, got to get to lunch. You're, you're staying around and experiencing the time as your church fam with your church family. Um, and finally, number five of the different ways that I want to encourage you to, to make Sundays more meaningful um, is to stay for two services. Now, this is something that I've been talking about for a little while now. You're gonna hear a lot more about it if you're a part of LBF Church. Um, but, but we historically, and I don't know all the reasons why this has happened, but have been a church where people have been very mystified at the idea that they might be on campus for more than one service. Um, so we, we don't really have adult Sunday school. We have a little bit of something going on. And we also have a number of people that if they serve during a service, like may, maybe somebody will serve in Life Kids every other week, um, they'll serve in Life Kids and then they'll just go home. They won't attend um, the service on Sunday. Now there's some different reasons for this. Some people say like, well, I've, I've, I've got kids. Um, I don't know about putting them in Life Kids for two services in a row. Um, couple thoughts on that. The first is that um, if your kids are beyond the really, really young stage, my recommendation to you and what we have done as a family for a while now is that our kids attend a service with us and then everybody serves the other service. Um, my, my other um, thing I wanna communicate is this. Kids frequently watch the same movie, the same show, the same content over and over and over again. The idea that suddenly with Sunday school or with Life Kids, we're saying we can't possibly have them be in the same thing two, two uh, services in a row. I, I think that we are creating a problem that largely doesn't exist. I have actually been around at times when there have been kids who have been at two services in a row. And I know for a fact that for some of them, they really like being in two services in a row because the second time they're in that service, they get to be the kid who knows the answers to the questions. And all the other kids are looking at them being like, wow, you really know the Bible or you really get this. So I, I think that we're overblowing that. So I just wanna throw that out there. Um, the idea that we would look at this gathering on Sunday morning where, where we have hundreds of people gathering together, hearing God's word, experiencing worship, and that we're, we're trying to minimize our time there. We're like, well, let's just get out as quickly as we can. Um, it, it's a strange thing that we're doing. If you are a committed member of Life Bible Fellowship Church, or if you're com a committed member of a different church that has more than one church service on Sunday, I wanna encourage you, think of yourself as a two service person. Attend one, serve at one. Um, don't just serve and not attend because you need the worship gathering just as much as anyone. You are not better than that. You're not so mature that you don't need it. We all need it. 
So don't say, well, on the weeks that I'm serving, I just won't go in. You need to gather in there. In, in fact, I don't think that we should choose. I'm advocating that we shouldn't choose. But if you could only do one, you should be in there worshiping. Um, but then stick around and serve. Serve in Life Kids, where, where you get to be a part of bringing God's word to children. You might even serve in the class that your kids are in and that they're experiencing um, God's word in or that your grandkids are in. It, you can serve as a greeter. You can serve on the tech team. You can serve as, as, um, as an usher. You can serve on the parking crew. You can serve in the coffee house. You can just sort of linger around and say, I'm just going to look for people that look lonely or look disconnected and find a way to include them. Instead of going to Sunday saying, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get um, a sermon that will tell me something about the problems that I'm facing right now so that all feel like it was good for me, that hopefully the music will be the style I want. Oh, I really hope it's Acoustic Sunday, or I really hope it's full band this Sunday. I hope they do a hymn. I hope they don't do any hymns. Um, that instead we're coming and saying, God is going to be at work, and I am an important part of this church family, and I'm going to be around, and I'm going to be ready. And one of the ways that I'm going to be ready is I'm not, not going to jet in for a service and then jet right out. I am going to be sticking around to serve in a formal way or an informal way because I'm part of this church family. And when I'm not serving, there's a missing finger, there's a missing toe, there's a missing elbow, there's something that's missing. And I get to help bring my gift to God through the Sunday gathering. Uh, now, the list I just gave, it's not exhaustive. It's not everything that could happen on a Sunday but I hope that it paints a picture for you because what a beautiful thing if on 4 p.m. on Sunday after we've gathered that the only ways that we're thinking about Sunday are not, did I like the sermon? Did it connect with me? Did I like the songs? Was I warmly greeted? But that we get to think about, I got con to connect with this person who really needed a touch from the Lord and we got to pray together. I got to look around and see the people of God worshiping in a way that built up my heart. I got to help kids understand the gospel better through helping to teach this Sunday school lesson. If there are things like that going on, there's way more of a compelling reason for us to go into Sunday mornings ready for God to move, prepared for him to move in our hearts and in our community. And we're also going to be probably much more likely to be inviting others into the Sunday experience when we're having experiences like those. Well, if you have thoughts, complaints, feedback, questions about what I've talked about here, um, feel free to leave those as comments. Um, we post all the episodes of The Christian Contrast um, on YouTube, um, on our YouTube channel for Life Bible Fellowship Church, and also just on our website for lbf.church. And so you can find back episodes there. If you like this one and you're like, I want to hear more of The Christian Contrast episodes, you can do that, or you can also just download the podcast, the audio podcast, anywhere that you can download podcasts. Um, we will be back in two weeks with a another episode of the Christian Contrast. Until then, thanks so much for taking the time to listen, and we'll see you in two weeks.